Yes, please go ahead. Just recommend some guidelines on how we can do that, this in our workplace. Right. So all experiments have three, well, all, effect, all effective experiments have three principles in common. The first is a clear target. The second is a precise plan. And a third is a quantifiable measurement. And these are important because they set the parameters of the experiment. So we need to start out with a clear target of what we're trying to achieve. The idea of, I want to increase my employee's motivation, that is a goal. I would argue that that's not a clear target. A clear target is, I want to increase my employee's productivity by 10% within the next three weeks or within the next six months, or I want, or I want 95% attendance on Zoom calls. It is a, a clear articulation of what the experiment, what the outcome of the experiment should look like, what it should be. A precise plan is what is going to take place, what changes are going to be made in, in the processes, so employee motivation, what changes are you going to make to try to get to your target that you've set? And important, and this is what I mentioned earlier, is having a comparison group. So let's say you have 20 employees, right? So a precise plan is in, for these 10 employees, we're going to do X. And for these 10 employees, we're gonna to continue to do what we did before. The great thing about that is if you notice a change in, in the employees, that you experimented with something new, then you can be pretty sure that the reason that the change exists or a change happened is because of your idea, because of the experiment, or because of, of your idea on how to improve your employee's motivation. But if you don't have that comparison group, then you lose your ability to say this caused this. And that's a very important part of, of experiments. So in the plan is who is going to, who or what um, is going to receive the change and what is that going to be compared to? And then the final piece is just how are you going to quantify the outcome? And you want to do it in such a way that it's relatively simple and straightforward to measure. So something like going back to employee motivation saying, I want to increase my employee motivation by 25%. I don't know how to measure employee motivation. Um, I don't know how to quantify it. A quantifiable measurement that you could use is I'm going to take a pretest and ask my employees just on a survey how, um, how motivated they feel and then do a post test and ask the same question. And then at least I have something quantifiable that I can compare against. And I'm gonna go into a, uh, an example right now that'll hopefully make this a little bit more concrete. So as you're thinking through, okay, I've got this idea on how I might improve my employee's productivity in this difficult time. And you're thinking through, okay, I've got this clear target. I've got a, a precise plan on how, or at least an idea of a precise plan on how am I doing, I have a measurement. Here's a, an example of what that looks like in a massive organization or a massive corporation like Disney. So Disney had the objective, or it's just part of its mission to contribute to the overall sustainability of, of Earth to be to implement environmentally friendly practices. Obviously, that's not a clear target. I, I don't know how you would measure something like that. However, in their hotels, they notice that they use a, a massive amount of water every day to do laundry. And they thought this might be an area that we can contribute to our mission of environmentally sustainable practices. So they set a clear target. We want to try to reduce water usage from laundry in our hotels by 15%. And then they came up with a precise plan. And what that plan was, was we're going to give half of the guests who come to our hotels the opportunity to sign a commitment to sustainability pledge. And if they sign it, we're going to give them this pin, this friend of the earth pin. And part of the sustainability pledge is a request to reuse their towels. And that was it. That was the change. And so they compared the towel reusage rates of guests who received the pin 
to those who had not and found that those who received the pin saved more than 25% more water than did those who did not receive the pin. And it's a, it's a small change like that. And having the comparison group is the power of experiments. We can see that this small change likely caused a decrease in water consumption by guests at a, at a hotel. And the great thing about this experiment is it's not hard to implement corporation wide. So Disney can roll this out at every one of their hotels with pretty minimal cost, which saves not only their bottom line and the reduced water usage, but also contributes to their mission as an environmentally sustainable company. Which goes to my the final piece of this puzzle before we get to the next question is a good experiment, especially in an organization where there are risks is to start small and keep it simple. Something as simple as a pin um, can have pretty drastic impacts if the experiment is run correctly. Okay, so Craig, we're already getting some, some questions here uh, from, from Peter Law. Uh, we'll address them a bit later. Uh, but yeah, how do we set up the conditions like in our workplace so that experimentation is possible in the first place? Right, that's a great question. So it would be naive to think that there are not risks associated with experimenting in your organization. There definitely are risks, but steps can be taken to mitigate those risks that ensure as much as possible that the downside risk of experimentation will be far outweighed by the upside that is, is gained by experimenting. So the first um, guideline that I have is follow the three principles of experimentation. Set your clear target, have a precise plan on how the experiment will address that target, and then a clearly, a very clearly defined quantifiable measure of how you will assess whether or not the experiment was a success or a failure. So just like Disney did with clear target of 15% decrease in water consumption by hotel guests, a plan on how they were going to run the experiment by giving half of the guests an opportunity to receive a pin if they signed a pledge committing to sustainability, and then a quantifiable measurement, which was, did they or did they not leave their towels um, or did they or did they not reuse their towels? And pretty quickly, they were able to see the effect of the experiment on not only the towel reusage rates, but on the decrease in water usage across the hotel. Related to that, as I mentioned, is adhere to the principle of starting small and simple. Experiments don't need to be big and grandiose. Often the best experiments start out small with just a, a small change to a subset of the organization or of the team who you manage and see what happens, see what you can learn about the world. The silver lining of the pandemic is that the status quo of how we operate or how organizations run has been disrupted. And honestly, I don't think any of us know what the new status quo is going to be. And an experiment provides us a very clear process for learning what that new status quo might be. And maybe the new status quo is just uncertainty that we don't know. So we always need to be agile. And experiments not only can show us that there is a strong need to be agile, but also a way that we can be agile by continually running experiments to learn about the environments in which we operate, to learn about our teams and how to improve not only their productivity, but their happiness. And Small and simple experiments are how we can do that without breaking the bank or, or running too high of risks of, of what happens if the experiment doesn't turn out the way that we think it might. Related to that is involving the right people. So making sure that not only do you have buy-in, if you can get it from your superiors who can green light the experiment, but also having people engaged in the experiment who want to see it succeed because they'll be willing to put in the extra effort that it might require for the experiment, whatever the intervention is, whatever new idea you're trying to test, that it is executed as well as possible. And so you want to have a, a mix of 
people with decision-making power high up in the organization who are at least giving you tacit approval for running an experiment, but also people who are deeply committed to following through on the outcome of the experiment. And finally is to create formal policies for experimentation. So when is it acceptable to experiment and when is it not acceptable to experiment? And defining the parameters of when experimentation is okay versus when it's not will help isolate not only the, the outcomes of the experiment, whether or not a success or a failure, but also the risks or the consequences of that. And two quick examples come to mind. Um, the first is I had the opportunity a few years ago to run a training in the Philippines with the, with the center. And I was working with some managers on, on how their teams approach failure. And there was a manager who oversees a fairly large team. I think it was a printing company in Manila. And he spoke about failure Fridays. And what these were was a specific part of every week. So Friday morning was set aside for teams to experiment, to try new ideas, new processes that they've been considering just to see what would happen. And the only rule was that if they learned something, they had to share it. So they couldn't keep it with their team. They had to share it broadly with the, the organization at large. And by doing this, they made it okay to fail, but they kept, they contained the failure to just Friday mornings. And so it didn't bleed over into the day-to-day -day operations that the organization had to do to maintain its clients, to, to keep profitable, but also created the space that they needed to learn something new, to perhaps find a better process for meeting their clients' needs, finding a new stream of revenue, um, the positive results are nearly, nearly boundless. There just needs to be a, a space in which experiment can take experimentation can take place without bankrupting the organization or costing you your job as a manager because you took too big of risk with an experiment. 